And here we are inside the 2022 Jeep Wagoneer. And let's take a look at our beautiful 10.1 inch screen. Let's hit the start button. There's your introductory screen showing you it is equipped with our 950 watt Macintosh sound system. Let's go ahead and toggle through the soft buttons. Here's your home button, which will show you your navigation. It'll show you your media controls and it'll show you your device manager. If you click over, over to your media, you can choose from FM, Sirius XM radio. You can choose your connected device or Bluetooth. Your comfort screen is nice and easy. You can drag and drop your temperature as so both sides and you can also sync them up as well you can change the speed of your fan both physically and electronically with your touchscreen let's move over to your nav now the good thing about the nav screen is if you use your wireless apple carplay or wireless android auto you can find your location with the phone let's just say you go just north of san antonio no problem getting there, but on your way back, you're gonna need connectivity with your phone in order to use your phone and your connected device to get back. If you don't have coverage, the good thing is our navigation is gonna be a satellite-based navigation system. Your sat nav will allow you to be connected with your navigation at all times. All right, and next up is gonna be our phone tablet. Let's just go ahead and click on it and open up our device manager. No phone connected. Do you want to pair a phone? The answer is, of course, yes. Go to your phone, go to your settings. I've got my shortcut set up here. Click on it, go to my Bluetooth portal. Make sure the Bluetooth is on, hit yes. Search for Bluetooth devices and it's here at the bottom. Let's just go ahead and make sure it's on the screen as well. Hi, is iPhone right there. Go ahead and hit yes. And make sure the pin number matches up, 421309. And let's pair it up here. Pair it up here. It's going to ask you, would you like your contacts and favorites to sync? And we will hit yes. And the next prompt should be our Apple CarPlay uh, prompt. And here it is. Do you want to connect Apple CarPlay once again? Yes. So you'll touch your use CarPlay on your phone, hit OK. Follow instructions on your device. We've just done that, hit OK. Now with the Uconnect 5 system, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto will both work seamlessly and wirelessly. Previously, you had to wire up your device ah, like you're charging it. That's no longer an issue. Good thing about it is you're gonna have your wireless charging. So the second you get in the vehicle, It'll automatically launch Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You'll put your phone down here nice and safe. It's automatically charging, so your phone will be charged up while you're driving. Go ahead and close it up, out of sight, out of mind. You're good to go. Now let's click on our vehicle tab. Now the vehicle tab will allow the controls. It'll allow you to access your settings. It'll allow your off-road page to become visible. Let's take a look. Let's go ahead and launch your off-road pages. And here are your vehicle dynamics your accessory gauges. We'll show you your coolant temperature, oil temperature, oil pressure, transmission temperature, and battery voltage. Pitch and roll, so once you're off-road, it'll give you an idea of what type of incline or decline that you're experiencing at the time. You can select your terrain here. You can go four-wheel high. It actually shows you your latitude and longitude, and your altitude, and your suspension settings are here as well. Next up, we're gonna have your apps tab. Let's just go ahead and click on it and you can organize your applications from A to Z alphabetically or from Z to A. Uh, one of the popular features is gonna be your Wi-Fi hotspot. Let's just go ahead and click on that. Now you can purchase the Wi-Fi and you can sync up multiple devices, makes it possible to have everyone connected. There'll be unlimited data. You can buy it for either a day, a week, or you can get a monthly subscription for it and your instructions on how to purchase will be here on the how to purchase tab once again here's your wi-fi tab how to purchase and it will walk you right through it all seven steps nice and easy and moving down from the beautiful 10.1 inch screen to our buttons here in the center console you will see your mute button which will mute the radio you will have your on off button for your auto start stop function now the auto start stop function will allow the vehicle to shut off the engine anytime you come to either a stoplight 
or a stop sign. Anytime you need to stop the vehicle, it'll shut down. It'll turn off your motor for a second, but it'll still keep all your creature, creature comforts going. You'll still have your AC. Anything, your screens will still be on. It just shuts off the motor to save you a little gas. The second you release your brake pedal, the engine fires up. It's nice and seamless. Now you're gonna go, your next button will be your active lane management, which has been tweaked a little bit, and I think you'll see it's for the better. Previously, the way the active lane management worked would be more like your lane keep assist. It would monitor either your left or your right side, and some vehicles would have the tendency to what they would call ping ponging, go from one side to the other. With the Wagoneer, now you have lane centering, so it senses both sides and it keeps you planted straight in the middle, nice and handy. You will have your traction control button here. Now, the reason you'd like to turn off your traction control, let's just say you're off-road and you're carrying some momentum and you wanna go through a little sand. If your traction control is enabled, it will not allow you to continue accelerating or power through the sand or the gravel or the mud. So you'll shut it off. Next to that, you're gonna have your hazard button. You push on it and your hazards illuminate as they do now, let's shut it off. Now you're gonna have your park assist. Now your active park sense works to either parallel park or perpendicular park the vehicle for you. Keep in mind when you're using it, it's the first time it'll catch you by surprise. Let's just say you're looking for a parallel parking space. You need to have it activated and it'll actively start searching for the spot. You need to pass the spot as it measures it and it'll give you prompts as to say it'll put, stop the vehicle, place it in reverse, release the brake, and it'll park it for you. Same thing with your perpendicular parking. It will first search for a spot that the vehicle will fit in. You're gonna have your park your uh, park sense button here that will shut off your rear park sense which allows you to connect your trailer and not have the incessant dee -dee 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 beeping so you're backing up your trailer your park sense is going crazy you just wish you could shut it off that'd be the button to use that then next you're going to have your tow haul button now the tow haul button just reminds the vehicle that you are actually pulling a load and it'll prevent it from shifting as eagerly as it normally does thinking primarily to save you gas what it does now, it'll hold the gears longer and make pulling just that much easier. And your final button will be your passenger side interactive digital display. You hit this button, the display turns on. Good thing about it, it is designed so only the passenger can see it. Here in the driver's seat, when you look, it looks completely dark, you can't see anything. But in the passenger seat, you can activate your interactive display, you can pull up your navigation, you can find the directions, and you can send them over to both the driver's side and to your 10.1 inch screen. Makes it nice and convenient. Just below that, you're gonna have your, uh, your terrain select button, and you can toggle through rock, sand and mud, snow, auto, and sport. Your rock, uh, your rock setting will con concentrate more on having traction for you and make sure that the, whatever tire has uh, traction will receive it if there's any kind of slip on one of the wheels it'll divert power from one of those wheels over to the wheels that have traction then you'll have your your sand and mud setting which will allow you to slide a little it'll decrease your traction control let you power through once again your auto button will send power to any wheel with traction if you lose traction, send it over to the other three. If you lose traction in two, send it over two down to the point where if you lose traction in three wheels, it will send traction to your sole wheel with, send traction over, send power to the wheel with traction. Uh, your snow setting will concentrate more on making sure you maintain traction. When you're leaving from any kind of stationary position, it will send the vehicle into second gear in the transmission as opposed to leaving in first gear. Makes wheel slip uh, something more of a, It'll minimize wheel slip, put it that way. Uh, your sport uh, button will allow your vehicle to get closer to red line. It'll shift a little more aggressively, downshift more aggressively, gives it more of a sporty feel. On the very right hand side, you will see your height control. This being the 4x4 with our, nav or with our air suspension, it'll allow you to lift it an additional 5.1, I believe, 5 inches for a total of right about 10 inches of total travel. 
You can lower the vehicle down to your aero mode, which does it automatically, or you can actually lower even further to make uh, egress, uh, entering, and uh, departing the vehicle even easier. You will have your hill descent control button here. Hill descent control will control your speed as you're coming down off an incline. All you have to do is concentrate on maneuvering in the vehicle. It'll maintain a one to two mile per hour speed as you're going down. And once you're in four by four mode, if you need to access your more aggressive gears, this having a two speed transfer case, you click on your four wheel low button, it'll throw it into four wheel low, give you more of an aggressive uh, gearing so you can have more climbing capabilities. If you do need to flat tow the vehicle, which is possible with a two speed transfer case, you will put the vehicle in neutral and you will push your neutral button here, which throws your transfer case in neutral, allows for flat towing and it will not tax your drivetrain. All right, and now we are at the point where we're going to talk about the 2022 G Wagoneers steering wheel. And the fit and finish and the quality of the, of the vehicle is just, I mean, everywhere you look, it, you can just can't help but run right into it. It's a, it's a thick leather wrapped steering wheel and the inside is, has what, what I refer to as your baseball stitching. You're gonna have your wood inserts here. You'll have access to control your adaptive cruise control. You'll have a little radar ball in the front that measures the speed of the vehicle in front of you. If you have your speed, your, your cruise control set, let's just say it's 60 miles an hour, somebody merges in front of you at 42 miles an hour, the vehicle will go ahead and match its speed and you can you can adjust the, the, the following distance. Once the vehicle gets out of the way, it'll automatically uh, go back up to your predetermined speed. Uh, cruise control is easy to, uh, to, to enable. You hit your button here and just like a typical cruise control, you'll have your set button here. Uh, you'll have your resume, let's say somebody pulls out and you step on the brake, stops your cruise control for a second. You hit your resume button and it'll take you right back up to your predetermined speed. Uh, looking through here, you will see your different pages. And uh, on the very left hand side, it'll give you your title as to what you're looking for. You'll have, for instance, your main menu, your vehicle information. At a glance, you can see your coolant temperature, your transmission temperature, oil temperature, oil pressure, battery voltage, all the important things. Keep going down, you'll see your trip information. If you hit your OK button, that'll go ahead and reset everything. It'll also reset your miles per gallon so you can get, have a good running idea of what type of mileage you're getting on the highway. It'll also set your timer so you can see the distance of your trip. Keep on going, now you have your navigation. Your navigation also shows up in the cluster. So if you are in the passenger side with your interactive digital display, you load up your navigation, you slide it over, It'll come over all the way to the driver's side and you can have an individual screen for your navigation. And it'll also show up in your beautiful 10.1 inch screen there as well. Keep scrolling down, there's your off-road page. If you see here, there's these little hash marks down below and you click through it and it'll show you your pitch and your roll. It'll show you your vehicle dynamics and your terrain status. It'll also show you and illustrate your ride height as well. As you keep scrolling down, you'll have your audio and it actually shows you, let's just say now on your Apple CarPlay, you're listening to Deep Purple. It'll show you the actual picture of the album cover. Very cool, nice attention to detail there as well. Your stored messages will show you if you need an oil change, any kind of uh, vehicle maintenance, it'll pop up there. Seeing there's no stored messages now, you know you're good to go. And most importantly to me, um, this vehicle is equipped with your heads up display. Sometimes when you get in the vehicle, you go, well, I really can't see it. Reason being is it just hasn't been adjusted for you with either the brightness or the height. So you'll go over to your settings page, which is gonna be number eight, and you'll see you can toggle between your regular setup so you can go ahead and configure your screen. And if you scroll over to the right, which was hidden for me at first, then you see your a heads up display settings, hit enter, hit OK, and you can change your display, uh, your content and layout. Your display height is where I was. I'm five foot six. I'm not a very tall person, so I have to have it up a little higher than, let's say, say somebody's six foot two way up here, like these guys in the back, and you'd have to look down so you can adjust your height as well. Let's keep going here. Let's exit out. And I always told somebody, when it says exit in, just pretend you're in the vehicle or out of the vehicle. So if you want to enter into your settings, just hit your in button, which will be your arrow going in, and you can go down as well. 
let's just go right back out and you're back to your main menu. This button here will toggle through your information pages. Hit this button and you'll see the pages pop up behind you and you can toggle through them as well. There's gonna be your, there's your fuel economy. Let's hit it back again. Your, your navigation and your vehicle settings. It's just basically a shortcut as to how to get there. You can answer your phone by hitting the green phone button. You can end your call by hitting the red phone button or you can decline your call by hitting the red phone button. You'll also have your gear selector button here down at the bottom. If you're towing and you prefer to maintain a certain gear, let's just say you're somewhere in Colorado and you're coming down a, a slight grade and you're trying to maintain your vehicle speed and you want it to go no higher than fourth gear, you'll just press it and hold it and it'll, it'll become a manual transmission or, or go to manual transmission setting and it'll hold that gear you've got your plus and your minus if you're driving and you inadvertently touch the button and put your vehicle into manual mode just press the plus button for two seconds and it will go right back into automatic mode now you will have your windshield wiper turn stock here and you will have your turn signal here as well you pull back and that'll activate your high beam release it and it goes right back into your low beam if you push it it will lock it in to your automatic high beam. Very easy to use and all the way around, good move. All right, so this cluster here is gonna be the control center for your sunroof. Now check it out. It is a dual pane panoramic sunroof, but you also get a third sunroof back in the back for the people way back in the back in the third row. Operating it is nice and easy. If you go all the way to your right, this will operate the screen. Uh, the sunscreen it is. Let's just go ahead and open it all the way up. Hit it again, and it'll follow itself all the way back to the back. Now to open the sunroof, it will go over to your left-hand control. And there she is, fully extended. Now this is gonna be a windsock and the windsock pre uh, prevents any kind of cabin turbulence. So as soon as that is deployed, it's nice and calm inside the vehicle. Now let's just go ahead and close up the sunroof and let's just show you how it vents. Now you don't have to open up the sunscreen. If you open the sunroof, it'll automatically push the sunscreen back and open up as well. Here goes your tilt function, you push the button and it opens up a small crack so you can go ahead and vent your vehicle and release some of the heat Let's go ahead and close it. Let's go ahead and close your sunscreen, and here she comes. Now, right above the sun, right above the controls for your sunroof, you're gonna have your assist button and your SOS button. Now, your assist button will dial one of three Chrysler help centers, and actual Chrysler employees will answer the phone and will answer any of your questions or take your compliments onto how well you are loving your Jeep Wagoneer. Your SOS button, when to press, will dial. 911. Now, in the event you are unable to speak, it'll actually give them your location down to the point where they can actually find you into an individual parking stall. Nice and handy. And right above here in the top center is going to be the control for your powered lift gate. Now, check these two lights out. These are all going to be LED. Now, when you hit the light button, I want you to see how slowly they turn on, and it's just a little added feature. Boom. They don't just come on, they slowly come on. And same thing when you shut it off, and they slowly turn it off. Just nice. And through the magic of Hollywood, I find myself now in the passenger side of the Jeep Wagoneer. The reason I'm in the side, in the passenger side, is we want to show you the passenger side interactive screen display. If you look down here and and you click on the interactive display button, if you depress it, it activates your screen. And good thing is the driver can't see it. It is designed so only the passenger can see it. From the driver's seat, this just looks like a black shiny surface. Now that you're here, you can see your different screens. You've got your audio screen, your video screen, your HDMI control screen. Scroll over, you have your navigation, you have your device manager, and you also have your camera tab. Check the camera tab out. I'm not sure if you can see it. Let's just go ahead and click on it. Now it'll give you a view from the top so you've got your 360 view and it'll give you your individual screens right now it's in surround view mode let's go ahead and click on the back this is going to be the close-up of the rear 
Once again, there's your first rear view. Here's the close-up of the rear view. This is going to be your front view and your wide angle front view and just another rear view as well. Let's go back here. Here's your navigation screen. When you click on your navigation, populates here and you can take a look at it. You can find your, nav your point of interest. You can get directions to it and you can send it over to the driver. It'll show up in the driver driver side display and it'll also show up in your navigation screen as well. Very handy, very intuitive, and I believe it's the first of its kind. Once you're here at your home screen, you'll see this little tab on the bottom, which is going to be your control tab. Go ahead and hit it, and you can change the brightness of your screen. Just drag it down. There you go. Brighten it up. You can control your wireless headphones. Here are your alerts. Looks like they're all clear. Nothing to see there. We're good to go. And you're back to 